everybody, it's Hannah here with back with more art and crafts activities to do with young children. Okay, so today's uh, thing that we're going to make is this jellyfish. Okay, so this is an activity that's perhaps for slightly older children than the videos I've done so far. Those were kind of like for ages three and up. I think most children from quite a young age could attempt those. Uh, I think young children can still do this, but it's just about how much parental involvement needs to happen. And uh, I think the ideal age range for this really, for sort of not too much parental involvement, would be kind of five to eight, I guess. Um, I think that kind of age group will really enjoy this and find it very fun and will be able to do most of the processes themselves. It's like the younger children, obviously, some of the processes will have to be done by grown-ups. Okay, so this is what we're going to make, and now let me tell you what you're going to need to make it. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is some sort of thing to make the kind of top of the jellyfish, some sort of uh, plastic container that maybe, you know, you've got some kind of food products in would be ideal. Anything sort of vaguely kind of bowl or plate shaped like that. Now, I'm all about e being eco-friendly and I'm normally one of those people that tries not to buy any plastic if they can help it. So, if you're in that group as well, you might want to use some kind of eco-friendly alternative. This is a nice kind of cardboard um, container that I got some stuff in my veg box in. You might get something like this. So, you know, there are eco-friendly alternatives out there if you don't want to be diving into getting something plastic. Um, so that's that's the main thing you need for the top. Now to cover this we're going to use our decoupage technique that I showed in one of my other videos. So um, you need some PVA glue, obviously it's brushes, palette, paint like pot for water is included in that and then some coloured tissue paper. Um, a word about colours, it's quite good to kind of stick to a colour theme. So my jellyfish that I've just showed you, I went for a sort of pastel-y, quite vibrant kind of um, sort of pinks and blues. Yeah, pink and blue, they were our main colours, and turquoise. So we went for kind of slightly neon-y pastel colours. For the one we're going to make today, I've decided to go for like a kind of cool colour palette of like mainly blues and greens. Um, so it's quite good to do that, to just pick a few colours for this. This is one of those proje projects that looks good if you kind of pare down the colours a bit, I think. So, yeah, so have a think about your colours before. I mean, it might be dictated by what you've got at home. But, I, yeah, so I've gone for some, like, this paper's grey. I've used this before. Um, it's got two colours, so you've already got there your dark blue and your green, and then I've got, like, a mid-tone blue as well. So those are going to be the three colours for the top of my jellyfish, so I've got those already. Okay, and then um, you're gonna need some cord to hang your jellyfish from. Um, I've got this stuff, which is good, it's a hemp cord, which is really strong. It's used a lot in sort of jewelry and beading and stuff, because it's super strong, um, and it's another quite eco-friendly product. Um, but if you've got like cotton thread, something like that, that's gonna be the thing that uh, kind of the, the whole thing hangs from. Okay, and it's also, as we'll see later, the thing that kind of is going to hold all of his tentacles together. So um, it needs to be quite strong, quite durable thread and not too thick because we need to run it through the top of the jellyfish as well. Okay, so that's another thing that you'll need. Um, for these ones, oh, I need to get it again. Um, these ones, he, I use this kind of packing foam, if you have some of this, to make these tentacles it looked really good, I think. And you need, if you want to do something like that, that's a kind of needle and thread type project. With the tentacles, I mean, you don't, you don't have to do that type. It's really kind of, again, it's about what you've got at home, what you feel like attempting. You could keep it simple and not do that element. But again, for those older children, they might find it really fun to kind of thread these sort of packing foam bead things um, on, a need, on a thread to make. And they do look, they make kind of cool tentacles. So... That's an option as well, so you only need a little thread if you want to do that. Um, and then, yeah, the rest of the tentacles are just kind of about, again, what you've got at home. Now, these, these are obviously just strips of paper, but what this actually is, is wallpaper, um, which makes it super strong and, um, you know, able to take paint quite well, because it's nice and thick, and it's got this nice curl in it already. So, overall, I've got to say, 
um, this, so if you've got any wallpaper up in your loft or wherever you keep it that you're not using, I found this stuff in our attic that's uh, silvery so that's already kind of super cool for making tentacles so I recommend that and of course it will come in a good length as well. Yeah because one thing to say about the tentacles, the way we're going to make it is once you've kind of painted them and decorated them they're going to hang from the middle so you want something that's quite long maybe longer than normal pieces of paper that you will have at home I would say and it's good to have sort of differing lengths so maybe for your paper you could go like kind of sort of 60 centimeters total so that you get a hang of like 30 centimeters um, for each tentacle okay so obviously things that you do have at home that might come in nice long lengths that could add some length to your tentacles bits of wool uh, maybe some bits of ribbon that is a good uh, that's a really long piece of ribbon I've uh, got there um, I've uh, I'm getting a lot of stuff through the mail at the moment so uh, you might well have some of this lovely it's all been popped by my son already but um, bubble foam stuff um, this is the bigger ones but you can equally use the ones with smaller bubbles on as well they look great because they look like they've got the kind of suckers don't they for the tentacles um, what else have I got here oh yeah so I found one of the random art and craft supplies that I have is I think it's an old blind I got it from a like a scrap store so I don't know but I had this at home and this was the perfect project to use it on so I've made some tentacles like that. Now, I'm guessing you don't have old blinds at home. So I've had a go at doing, making this myself from the wallpaper. So you could also do, make your tentacles like this if you like. It gives it quite a nice sort of effect. So that's obviously just where it's been folded, back it on itself like so. Where you just fold, then fold the other way, fold. So you can make some like that if you don't have any old blinds lying around at home. Um, so that's just you know more of the wallpaper paper and then done like that okay so oh um so these i got my son to to paint them on our jellyfish let me see here he is yeah so um we painted those uh tentacles and then actually the one on the old blind that's that was actually done by me but that's i've used a bit of felt tip there to um colour that one in so um, yeah so that's the other material you'll need is some paint if you don't have to use paint it depends how messy you want to get I guess you could also use felt tips crayons whatever really just something to give some of these tentacles some colour unless of course the other way you could approach this project is you could make your jellyfish just completely white or some other colour and then you don't need to do that but that's kind of one of the fun bits for the kids I think is uh, you know decorating the tentacles so um, yeah so a bit of paint or something okay so that's a fairly comprehensive list of what we need I think and now um, we can get cracking and I'll show you how to make everything hi everyone welcome back to our making a jellyfish video um, okay I've got a candle here I'm going to explain why <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with our top part, the body part of the jellyfish, I think, probably. Okay, and uh, what we're going to use this candle for, I was a bit sceptical about this method, but it actually worked really well, I gave it a try. We're going to um, heat up a needle to make our hole that we're then going to thread our uh, string through that's going to hold all the tentacles in place and kind of keep everything together. Okay, so obviously with plastic, it's quite hard, especially this is, stuff like this is pretty hard plastic. You could try putting a hole in there with a craft knife, but it's fiddly. Actually, the one I did on my jellyfish split as well. I put a hole in there um, and then it kind of split. So hopefully this method is going to avoid all that kind of pitfall. Okay, so I did, I tried this out earlier and it worked perfectly. Let's hope it does this time as well. Now, obviously this is probably a uh, grown-up part of the activity I wouldn't necessarily let the children I would even do this in advance don't even do it when they're there um, unless you have a really sensible child that um, enjoys these kind of tasks I guess um, but yeah just hold your pin or your needle in the flame of your candle for I don't know oh look it's yeah it's definitely getting hot now I think it's kind of hard to tell but yeah, yeah, look, it's sort of melting the wax. 
Okay, and then you're aiming obviously for the middle. Don't touch it, it'll be really hot. Yeah, and it, yeah, you know, I've got to say it works brilliantly. Look at that. And you can kind of go around and enlarge the hole and you get a really good, I don't know how clear that is, but you get a really good clean hole without using any sharp piercing objects like a craft knife or anything. I'm gonna put that out now. Uh, <coughs> okay, so that's a slightly unusual way perhaps to make a hole in a plastic object, but yeah, it does work really well. So now we've got that, we just need to decoupage it. I cover it with tissue paper. Um, so I've got some here I've already torn. Uh, so if I just refer back to my one that I made before, I actually, so I'm in two minds about what looks best. This one I did from the inside. Um, and then you've got kind of a shiny surface on the outside. And this one I'm gonna try the reverse and then you can kind of decide which one you wanna do as well. I'm gonna do this one on the outside. So obviously if you do it on the inside, glue first and then you put your darker pieces that are your sort of smaller pieces that are just kind of your highlight pieces I guess you put those in first cover them up with glue and then you put your bigger strips of your main color in behind that's, that's kind of the way I look at it you've got like kind of highlight colors and main colors there's actually yeah sort of a darker strip in there as well in this jellyfish but I don't know how clear that is so here I'm going to have my smaller strips I've already torn on these I'm going to have my dark blue are my greens, um, maybe make that one a bit smaller again, again I'm just tearing it, I'm not cutting it because I like that, I like the texture you get from torn pieces, and then bigger strips for your kind of main colour, okay, right let's get stuck in, so I've got my PVA glue here already poured out, um, and now, oh, this is one of my glue paint brushes. This has actually gone really gluey. Oh, can I use the other one? Yeah, okay. So, first job is just to cover, maybe not the whole thing in one go. Uh, we'll start with a fairly good section of side here. Obviously, all the containers you have might have slightly different shapes. You can maybe decorate the edge with some ribbon or something. I've even seen versions of this where people have put like a kind of plastic shower cap over the whole thing at the end to give it like a uh, kind of extra layer on top. Um, there's all kinds of ideas. Uh, yeah, I did, I had a little go at putting like kind of some sort of cellophane or something over the top as well to create a nice effect. So have a little play around with this. There's, there's no rules really with any of these <laughs> activities that I suggest. So I've put it down and because I'm gonna glue around it and I want everything to kind of stick together seamlessly, I'm also gonna glue on top. So I'll put a few more of these sort of highlight colors here. Oh, you know what? I guess I'm doing this the wrong way around. I'm still thinking like as if I was doing it on the inside. Well, yeah, they'll kind of peek through, but then I'll put some more on top. Yeah. So actually, if you want them to be the highlights, maybe stick them on top. Okay, so let's put down some of our blue now. Yeah, this, this will get a bit obscured. Yeah, you'll find it's quite hard to wrap it around. It kind of wants to aim down. So, it doesn't matter how neat it is because you can just keep going and just keep layering up. Um, yeah, look, I'm losing all that, so that was kind of not worth doing that way. I'm going to stick some more on top. There we go. You live and learn, don't you? So we'll stick some more on top. Actually, kind of nice. You can see, because it's because tissue paper is see-through, you're getting kind of a nice effect putting them underneath too. Right, any bits there that are just totally going off on the wrong track, I'll just tear it. Um, so yeah, obviously older kids will be able to do this probably themselves. You can just leave them to it. Your younger ones, you're going to have to stick around and help them do this a little bit. Right, so I'm just going to go in with my plain blue for now. <laughs> my son's looking on the door. Hey! It's 
So noisy. Okay. I'm making a video. I know. Yeah, but shh, don't, so don't talk to me. I want to show you something. Okay, hang on. Let me just, uh, okay, so what I'm actually going to do now is stick a piece on the top like that. So that's what I should have done to begin with. I'm sticking a piece on the top like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do all the way around, just finish that off. Okay, so welcome back to part three of jellyfish making. Okay, so I finished off my uh, jellyfish top um, using this decoupage technique where you just kind of glue it all the way around and stick things on and then glue on top. Um, it's actually when it's still not quite dry um, yeah that'll take a little while to dry so that's why it's good to do it first and get it out of the way um, that's where I stuck the pieces underneath which was kind of a mistake as it turned out but it actually looks quite nice so it wouldn't be the end of the world if you did that and then that's the pieces stuck on top which yeah I'm pleased with these colours I think they've come out nicely on the top I didn't really say this before but do feel free to just go all over the top. You know you've got your hole there that you've already made and you're just, tissue paper so thin, you'll, it'll be no problem at all to just puncture that with a needle when the time comes. Okay, so that's that, that's their drying. And now let's get on with our tentacles. Okay, so uh, the first kind we're gonna do is the kind with the um, these sort of bits of packing foam, whatever you wanna call them. Okay, so I've sort of started off here. Now I am the world's worst sewer, so uh, this is real basic stuff. You, you may come up with a better <clears throat> solution to this problem than I have. So this, the problem is this, that it just, um, if you pull it, it will just tear right through because um, it's such a soft material. Um, so all I did was I made a big knot, about like four, and then I went up through lengthways with my needle um, but then just to sort of secure it extra, I, I've, what I've done is, I've done that once, I'll do it again, look, I've, I've gone in the side um, of my piece of foam here, polystyrene, whatever it is, and I'm going to pull up through once more. Now even this, if you, put, if you just pull it really tight, it's just going to tear straight through because it's so soft. But the thing is, it's not really going to be load bearing, this stuff is so light that it's not really a problem. So just do whatever you need to do to kind of get it so that you've got one starting piece at the bottom and then you literally just thread a whole load of these on here like this. Now this is really simple sewing um, and it's exactly the kind of thing that children might really enjoy doing obviously just make sure they're gonna keep their fingers out of the way of the needle as it comes up through. Ah oh, it's fallen out! Okay always happens these kind of things but yeah you get the idea I don't think I need to do a whole bunch of them you get the idea you're just going to keep threading them and then sort of similar to the way you started when you tie off at the end you might want to like loop it through the last one several times so you're going to do like a whole row of these so that you've got a tentacle a set of tentacles and you'll have two of course because they'll hang down like that um, but you could do two or three strings of these if, if this is something that you're particularly enjoying. I think they make great tentacles. It's a good way to use up these foam beads that otherwise just get chucked away. Okay, so that's one style of tentacle. Uh, obviously we talked about the, um, this stuff, the foam, the popping bubble wrap, the, um, the ribbon and the wool. I mean, apart from cutting them, you don't need to do anything with them. So they're fairly straightforward. So the only other ones that require kind of making by you, um, and really the sky's the limit with these, is these uh, sort of paper or wallpaper ones. Um, you, you sort of concertina ones and your plain. Um, and then it's just about decorating them really, however you want, felt tip, crayon, um, or paint, which is what I've got here. So I said, as I mentioned earlier, that I'm going to do um, a sort of uh, cool colour planet of mainly blue and green. Now, what a lot of us will have at home is just like maybe one blue, one straight of green, um, and that's it, isn't it? So I'm going to show you some ways that you can just, um, you know, do get the kids doing a bit of colour mixing 
and in that way, I don't know how well you can see my colour palette, um, giving yourself a range of colours to play with and also just, you know, giving them some fun with paint. So obviously the easiest one is, I'm just going to make a lighter shade of blue there with my, with my white. But then you'll notice I've also got on my palette some yellow, obviously we all know blue and yellow makes green. So you can make here now a nice range of sort of greeny, bluey, what a nice sort of turquoisey colour, which I always kind of think of. I don't know if I'm going to paint that one on there so you can see the colour I've mixed. Uh, I, yeah, there you go. So I always kind of think of that as a very sea colour anyway. So obviously for a sea creature, that's kind of cool. Okay, so what I encourage my son to do look, is do sort of patterns with these. But obviously you don't want to keep cleaning your brush to put a new colour on. So what you can do is, if you get the whole thing spread out, kind of do some stripes in one colour and then when you've done the whole thing, oh it's rolling up, put some scissors on the end, um, yeah that's one thing to watch, it will kind of roll up, that's what we kind of want it to do because it gives it a nice tentacly shape but you might just want something to weight down the ends when you're painting them like that. Okay so um, <clears throat> obviously bit of a pet hate of mine when you <laughs> when you don't clean your brush and then you get muddy colours. So I've got my son pretty well trained already at like four and a half. He knows he's got to wash his brush before he picks up a new colour. Uh, colour mixing also, I was pretty naughty there. I went in with my blue into my yellow. So, but hey, be as uh, strict about that as you want. I'm pretty strict about it. Um, okay, so I've done my sort of my mixed in colour there. Um, and then I also have these sort of lighter colours that I've already actually already got in paint pots. What shall I use here? Mm, maybe I'm just going to go with my darkest blue and then just do, I don't know, like some some dots or something. Yeah, so it's nice to kind of mix up the marks. You can, my son, the one he did, he did one of them he just literally went all the way down I think with one colour or maybe he kind of mixed in a couple colours and then one I encouraged him to sort of dot all the way down and then another one we did this kind of inter this sort of repeating pattern. So I mean really the sky's the limit. You know, it does look quite nice with some dots and dashes patterns. Equally you could just paint all each single one a, a, a different colour and just keep it really simple. Um, again, depending on the age of the child, how complicated you want to do it. So that's the other element to do is painting them. And yeah, simple as complicated as you Okay, hi and welcome back to the final part of our jellyfish project. Okay, so I've got my finished tentacles here. I've just quickly painted a couple, um, but obviously you can do a lot more than that. And I've got my top now, which is almost completely dry. Um, so that thing I did by mistake, actually, I think it looks really nice. I'm gonna do it like that again. It kind of, the ones that are behind the main tissue paper, I've got this kind of bubbly effect that looks very underwatery. And I think of the two, the one that's um, like on the outside and the one that's on the inside of the bowl, I prefer outside. I'm liking this kind of texture that I'm getting from the tissue paper on the outside. So yeah, for me, I think if I do it again, I'm going to do it like that. Okay, so first thing you want to do is get your needle and make sure that you've got that hole there. Kind of enlarge it like you did when you made it for your thread to go through. Okay, now we're all ready to go with that. Okay, next thing, get all your tentacles and lay them out so that they've got, doesn't matter how long they are, they can be all different lengths, but the midpoint is roughly in the same place. Um, I mean, again, it doesn't matter if it's quite the middle, if one side hangs down longer than the other, that also looks quite nice, but roughly, and I guess uh, do it so that there is a bit of variety in what you've got. So don't put all the same ones together. Maybe I'll move that one over there, that one there. And I'll get, oh, they're rolling up on me. Too, too rolled up. Okay, and then I've got these ones. All right, so I've got all of these. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hemp cord I mentioned at the beginning. You can use whatever you like. Something quite strong though. 
Um, I've heard fishing line recommended as a as a good thing to use, um, but I didn't have any of that, so I went with what I had. Um, and then just kind of bunch them together. That's going to be your middle point. Now get your cord, wrap it round. Leave a bit of a dangling end. I've got about a meter's worth here, so uh, maybe a bit less than that, depending on how long you want the string that comes through the top to be, I guess. I'm just going to tie a very simple, probably a double, double knot in there, quite tightly, however much strength you think it will need, depending on how thick your bundle is. Now you've got a bit of a dangling in there and that's fine because that's just going to become one of your tentacles, so you really don't have to be too exact. And then the other end is going to go through the top. Then it's all going to come together. Oh, look, I love actually how these ones that are. Look at that. Okay. So that basically is our jellyfish done. Okay. Um, and then with this piece at the top, of course, you can, you can hang that now. You can tie a loop in it if you want um, so that it can hang from things. But yeah, that's turned out really well. I'm liking the blue colours. There is our jellyfish. I hope you can see all, all, all its glory. Uh, I mean, I haven't even painted all of the things here. I think you could go into a lot more detail than that. And, oh, yeah, it's turned out really well. I think they'll make a great pair, won't they? The two of them. So there you go, okay? A nice art and craft jellyfish for your children to have a go at. I hope they enjoy it, okay? And thank you very much for watching once again, everybody. Bye.